We'll record this. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today, guys and gals. It is Jamie Randall, Restoration Marketing Group. And today we're going to discuss uh, you know, your 2020 internet marketing plan. Uh, 2019 has come and gone extremely quickly. Uh, seems like every year the, the pace picks up a little bit for some reason, but 2019 is coming to an end. So it's that time of year where we're all stepping back and thinking about, you know, what we've accomplished, what we've done well, what we need to um, improve on coming into the new year. So I kind of thought it'd be a good idea to kind of go through a process with you guys, you know, specifically related to restoration businesses and internet marketing and kind of what the, the future is looking like in our industry and, and what we need to do to, to stay on top of things. So let's go ahead and, and get started. Today, we'll, <clears throat> what we're going to cover, so we're going to kind of step back and, you know, like I mentioned, look at what, what kind of revenue we did in 2019 and what we need to, what our goals are going to be in 2020. We're going to take a look at the three fundamentals to marketing success, how to optimize your website for conversion, and, the, you know, the overall big picture of, of online marketing. I mean, there's so many things you can do these days. I mean, it's you know, some of it is a waste of, not a waste of time, but some of it is more effective than others, right? That's what we're going to look at today to kind of discuss what you guys should be doing. And we're going to look at a few trends in 2020 that we're seeing. And then we're also going to take a few minutes to kind of, you know, step back where you guys can map out some, uh, some things you want to execute, you know, early on in 2020 and, you know, into Q2, Q3, and Q4 um, next year. So, I know you guys are busy, you know, we're all busy, so, but I do ask, like, like for you to get the most of this, you know, silence your phones, get on Facebook, grab an iPad, <clears throat> that way you can take notes kind of as we go, you know, they say you retain more, if, you know, if you're just sitting here listening to me ramble on, you won't retain as much and get as much out of it as, as if you were actively engaged and writing things down as we go and any thoughts you have and things you want to improve on next year, so. You know, if you're if you're a restoration company owner or you you know do the marketing and sales or sales director or whatever your role might be, um, in regards to sales and marketing for restoration, you know, sit tight. This you know the problem. I'm not going to try to keep you guys too long. We'll try to keep it closer to 60 minutes, and um, that way you can come up with some. You can leave here with some good ideas on what you guys need to do to, to crush it next year in 2020. And also as a bonus for you guys, if you stay till the end. I um, have a, an online marketing uh, checklist with a bunch of things that you guys should be doing. So I'll uh, give you a link where you can download that at the end. So, uh, so hang tight and I'll get you access. So some of you have on here, you know, we, we might have spoken before. Some of us we might maybe not have, you know, we haven't spoken yet. But, you know, this is really less, this is more or less about, you know, me helping you guys. It doesn't really matter who I am. But just in case, you know, I'm not some random uh, you know, dude that didn't have any experience in this, you know, I've kind of grew up in the construction industry since I was young and kind of went to college for, you know, worked through um, different industries, you know, from general contracting, heating and air, um, kind of rolled into the marketing for restoration companies. And, you know, here we are. So that's kind of our, that's all we do now. We specialize in marketing for restoration companies. We don't work with any other, you know, general contractors. Heating and air. We, this is this is our bread and butter now. And I also do a little bit of speaking, you know, as far as internet, you know, latest trends, what's working, what's not, and you know, as far as online marketing goes, in general. Um, and like I mentioned, this is all we do. I mean, this is just some, you know, a few testimonials for some of our clients that we work with over the years. Um, so hang tight, and we'll uh, go over some good stuff today. So you know, as we go through this this presentation, like you know. Think back, like we all have our biggest pain points in our businesses, you know, you know, from week to week, month to month. So just, you know, think about what's the hardest part about marketing, you know, your damage restoration business online. I mean, it's, you know, what should you do? I mean, it's obviously extremely competitive, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is, right? There's nothing we can do about that. So we got to, you know, this is the, the battle we've chosen. So we just got to figure out how to win it. Um, so just give you guys an example. I mean, this was kind of, um, one of our clients that came to us uh, last year in, in Charlotte and he, his biggest question, I mean, and this seems to be, I mean, all of our question, right? Like we all need more leads 
more customers, right? Or in our world, it's, you know, more jobs, whether it be dry outs, you know, mold removal, removal if you do that. Um, some of you guys specialize in the, in the fire stuff. So, you know, everybody's kind of got their own, you know, niche, but they, you know, at the end of the day, we're all restoration, damage restoration related. related. So, and then the interesting thing is, is 97% of consumers look online before buying locally. And I mean, this, and this is true in our world too. I mean, yeah, I understand like a lot, you know, some networks will give you guys jobs, some insurance, you know, agencies will give you guys jobs, you know, plumber referrals, like, you know, I understand that, but there's a ton of business that can be scooped up on the internet. Like a lot of people now, if their basement floods, I mean, they don't, they don't have their insurance, you know, they might not have their insurance policy handy or, or nearby. They pull out their cell phone, they type in, you know, my foul, my house flooded, who can I call? And then they call, you know, one of the top results. I mean, we we'll see it all day, every day. So it's definitely, and it's only going to trend up, right? Like every desktop traffic is slowly going down and mobile traffic is increasing, um, you know, with all the technology and smartphones. So, you know, one thing that, you know, they, they came to a restoration one and Charlotte came to us with is, you know, how do we, you know, dominate the internet in the local area? And, and at the end of the day, it's kind of what you, you know, whether it's, Facebook, Instagram, SEO, paid ads, like it's all a means to an end, right? We want more leads, more jobs, right? So the, the, the tricky part is figuring out the best combination locally to drive the most business. So, you know, that's kind of what we, what we work with on them. And then, you know, we kind of, you got to make sure you have a website to convert. And then you also want to put that website in front of traffic. Um, you know, a good looking website doesn't do you a whole lot of good if nobody's going to it, right? So it's kind of a catch. 22 and they go hand in hand you got to have a good well optimized converting website but you also have to get traffic to that website which leads to phone calls which leads to more jobs for you guys so you know you got to be thinking about this from multiple angles you know especially next year too like the, you know we do come across a few companies that might not even have a website yet right they just kind of built their business up on referrals and, and people they know and networks but you know people are starting to realize that you know it's almost 2020 the internet is obviously not going away and it's time to start thinking about, you know, your online presence and how you can maximize you know, your lead flow, you know, next year and, and moving forward. So, you know, and this is just an example, right? And, it, and this stuff's always shifting, but I mean, it, it's, you can get a ton of phone calls. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen that the three pack and the organic down below. I mean, that's how you start to, to take over a market is when your company is showing up, you know, everywhere. So how does that happen is, I mean, you got to hit this from multiple angles. You got to get a lot of good online reviews. You got to have somebody working on your SEO. You got to optimize your Google My Business, keep it updated, add pictures. I mean, so there's kind of a formula that Google likes and wants to see as you do this. And I mean, this is an example I mean, of, a, of a month, but you know, they got 63 leads in a month. Uh, that's, not, that's not too bad. I mean, I've seen better, I've seen worse, but I know a lot of guys I talked to like, man, if I can just get a couple extra good leads a week, it, you know, it'd be a game changer for us. Um, so just keep that in mind. I mean, that's really, you know, what, 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 what kind of leads do you want? And we'll get into this more as we go, but just what, you know, what, what kind of lead volume do you want per month rolling into 2020? And then, you know, I kind of mentioned that. So just think about this from, from your perspective, your market, and kind of where you would like to be seen as the, as the results go. So let's kind of break this down and, and, you know, from a piece by piece standpoint, I mean, where, where do you want to be next year? I mean, we got to, we all have to take time to actually sit down and map out where we're going to go. And I don't know if you guys have heard Brian Tracy or not. He's kind of a, uh, I don't know if you call him a self-help guy or personal development, but he says success is goals, all else is commentary. And I feel like a good way of explaining this is kind of, you know, like a sailboat, right? Like if you're, if you're, any of you guys have ever been sailing, I mean, you're, you're out on the water and I mean, if you don't have the sails set properly and adjust for the winds but based on that day, I mean, you kind of just, I mean, you won't even go anywhere. And sometimes if you don't adjust the sails accordingly, you can, I mean, you're just going to end up, you know, who knows? I mean, wherever, just, you're just going to float into the, <laughs> into the abyss. But if, if you have clear goals, you know, and for the met sailboard, sailboat metaphor, I mean, it's, you, you know that you can get from point A to point B. 
I mean, I know this kind of sounds elementary, but you know, a lot of people, I mean, mom, myself included, right? We all get caught up in the day to day. I mean, you guys are keeping track of your technicians and making sure you got equipment, you know, chasing insurance companies down to get paid. So it's just, yeah, this is just a reminder to actually step back, you know, take a look at what, you know, what went well in 2019, but maybe what you, what are your goals in 2020 and then maybe what you need to change to get there. And that way, you know, like, all right, I'm doing, you know, if you want to get a half a million this year, like you want to get to a million next year, like what are the steps you can take each month to help you get there? And this is kind of a cool Harvard study I wanted to show in here. I love this story. But in, in 1979, they, did, they interviewed a bunch of grads. And so only 3% of these grads that they interviewed had clear written goals and plans to accomplish them. So the interesting part is, they, they followed up, I think, I mean, I forgot to put the timeline in here. I think it was like 10 years, 15 years later with these same people. And the 13% of the class who had goals were earning on average twice as much as the other 84 who had no goals. And then the 3% who had clear written goals on average were earning 10 times as much as the other 97%. I mean, that's just, I don't know, it's kind of a cool story. I, I kind of wouldn't mind uh, reading a little bit more into the details of that. But, I mean, this is all we need to know, right? It's, it's important. Write down your, your goals. Keep them, you know, fresh to where you can, I, you know, this isn't a once-a-year thing, I don't believe either. I mean, this is like a, you know, monthly, probably at a minimum, maybe even weekly, right? That way you're, you're focusing on uh, productive tasks and projects to get your business to the next level. You can't just pull it out once a year and then be like, man, I forgot that was even a goal. Um, so I think even even more powerful can be have you know writing them down with the plans to accomplish them and then checking back on those plans to make sure you know you're heading in the right direction. So I mean this is you guys can kind of tweak this as you want, but I think I mean a good starting framework for this is you know to kind of set your 2020 goal. You know, if it's a million, break that, divide that by four, two fifty, and then you know, divide that by three to get your monthly revenue. Um, and then you know, could you could go ahead and put on your calendars like, hey, let's at the end of Q1, go ahead and pick a you know a three hour block or whatever it is on your calendar. Like, hey, let me check in on my goals, see how we did, what what we did well, what we need to adjust. And if, if you go ahead and put that on your calendar, um, it's it's a lot harder to forget to do it. I mean, that's personally I have to do that myself, right? Because we all have a million pieces of paper, a million notes on our phone. We're getting calls, emails, texts, you know, notifications all day, every day. It's, it's, it's hard just to think about, oh, let me check on my goals today, unless you actually put it in the calendar. Um, you know, there's a saying that's, you know, what, I can't remember the whole quote. But basically, it's like once it gets scheduled, it's real. Other than that, it's just a, a thought, an idea. It doesn't mean anything until you put it on the calendar and you do it, right? So that's kind of, that's just one way you can look at it, obviously. Some of you guys might have your own method that you've used over the years that works for you, so just, you know, continue with that if it works. Um, but, you know, I kind of already touched on this. So think about, hopefully you grabbed a, a pen or paper or you have, like, a Word doc open on your, on your computer. You know, go ahead and put on, like, what would you like to do next year and then divide that out by 12. And then, you know, divide that by you know, what your average transaction value is, then, you know, how many jobs that you'll need, and then how many leads would lead to that many jobs. Well, I'll kind of show you guys an example here in a second. Um, so let's say you want to do 1.5 next year. That'd be 125000 per month. Let's say your average, I mean, this is kind of more for the, the water damage people on here, but you know, I typically, every market's different, right? But you know, anywhere from three to 5,000 seems to be the average um, job size. You know, probably closer to three to 35 in most markets. So that would mean 35 jobs a month is what you need to do starting January next year to hit 1.5 next year. So the next question is, you know, how many leads do you need? Right? It's like, okay, we know we need 35 jobs, but you know, okay, how many leads will get will get us there? So what is your average conversion rate? And then once you, you know, you know, a lot of times we see from anywhere 70, 90 percent. Um, sometimes it drops as low as 50, just kind of depends on what the, uh, what kind of leads and jobs that the client wants to get. But 
I'm assuming most of you guys are pretty good or your your office staff are pretty good at you know closing the leads that come in. The good thing in our this is a good thing in our industry, a lot of it is high urgency emergency situations, right? Like people don't shop around for a restoration company quite as much as they do for a new roof, right? So that's the, the beautiful thing. And our conversion rates are a lot higher than a lot of other industries. So that's so that's awesome. So you know, here's an example. Let's say let's just say you convert seven out of ten. You get 10 leads, you'll land 70% of them. So if you need 35 jobs a month, divided by 0.7, you need 50 leads a month. And I think, um, you know, arithmetic is not my, my strong <laughs> strong point, but I think, you know, if that's 50 divided by 30, I mean, you probably need, I don't know, one, one to two-ish, you know, yeah, actually it's probably around one and a half a day would be the average. I mean, obviously we know that fluctuates, especially in our industry too, right? You might get four in a day based on the weather patterns, you know, did it freeze at night, did a hurricane come through, um, was there a wildfire out in California? I mean, there's so many variables, right? But on average, you need to average out around a one, a one and a half a day. So, you know, take a minute, everybody, you know, I, I know I kind of went, I feel like I went through it kind of fast, but you know, take a minute. I'd, I'd write that down on your pad and paper. And you might have to come back to this. Right? I don't think, I think this takes a little bit longer than an hour to kind of map this stuff out and just run with it. But this is kind of to help you guys get a jump, you know, and start thinking about it and maybe get a head start and you can schedule some time to really sit down and kind of map out a plan for your, for your company and, and where you want to go. But, you know, I'd, I'd, at a minimum, I'd recommend, you know, kind of picking a revenue target and then kind of how many leads reverse engineering it to see how many leads you know you need to get per month to get there. So let's transit let's transition into like the, the fundamentals of you know now we have our you know revenue target we kind of need to all right let's step back and think like all right so now we need to figure out how to you know get to that revenue target right like what kind of messaging do we need to have in the marketplace to get there. So that's what we're going to go through on the second step and you know the marketing message and so we're going to talk about you know who who is your ideal customer and I mean there, there's different like you know the mold the people that specialize in mold is a completely different customer profile than people that just do dry outs um, you know some companies like to specialize in just commercial jobs um, some do you know water fire and mold you know there's some companies that just you know they they chase the fire trucks, right? They just do fire damage repair. So really think about that. And I mean, you need to think about, you know, where is your ideal customer? And you got to kind of start building, you know, like a quote unquote customer avatar, right? You don't want to just any and everybody. Um, you want to be in the markets where your, your ideal customer is located. So here's kind of an example. I mean, obviously this is just this, like I said, this example is going to, you know, the, your market demographics, for example, are going to be completely different than, you know, California versus Florida or Florida versus Texas. I mean, there's so many variables, but, you know, some common ones are, you know, homeowners. Most everybody, you know, you can't, usually you don't have the authority from a renter, right? To, or you're not authorized to go in there and dry it out. So it's always a pain. So you don't really want to go after apartment buildings. You want to go after homeowners that actually own the home. You know, preferably higher income homeowners is better, right? That way you're they're not um, you're not chasing them for money or they're not beating you up on pricing. I mean, et cetera. So I mean, homeowners with with higher um, income brackets is kind of ideal, right? And you can kind of break that down to there's there's certain zip codes that probably fit that profile better than others, right? Like lower income renters might be in certain areas of your, of your town. So it's just some thing things to think about when you're doing your marketing and prospecting you know, in your service area, you know, and then also think about from a messaging standpoint and an ideal customer standpoint, like what's, what are some pains and frustrations they might be having their toilet overflow. They got mold on their walls. Do they get to have a fire in the, in the kitchen. I mean, they just want, you know, sometimes they'll make a couple calls. Nobody's answering their calls, which drives me crazy, especially in our industry. 90% um, of you guys are, are 24 seven. We still see it where, where people are just missing calls. And they, I mean, you, we all know what happens if you don't answer the call. Even if you call them right back, they're scrolling. They're already calling the next company. The next company to answer, they're like, no problem, man. I have a technician in the car heading to you in 15 minutes. 
that person's going to get a job. I mean, it could have been a fifteen thousand dollar job um, that you could have potentially lost just because uh, the, the phone wasn't answered on the other end. Um, but that's a pain and frustration that that you know your ideal customer has, and they have water leaks that they just want to get. You know, they want the water leak stopped, and they want their high, their house, you know, back to how it was prior to the flood. Um, sometimes they're too busy to deal with insurance companies. So that's where, you know, you can step in. A lot of our clients will, you know, kind of help the, the customer through that process. So they don't have to deal with it. It's just another selling, um, you know, benefit or pitch to the customer. Um, so that's just a few examples as far as the demographics, you know, and some pains and frustrations. So you kind of keep you kind of go in deeper with this and you know what are some of their fears and implications like they don't want to be ripped off or overcharged you know they think they're paying too much um you know they don't want to get mold in their home if it's not dried out properly and just as a side note i mean that's something good to bring up you know because a lot of people are like oh, i don't need <laughs> i don't need to dry my you know i don't need fans and dehues in here i'll just get my handyman bob to come over here and he can he can clean it up but i mean you can also I'm sure a lot of you already do this, but obviously remind them what to do that. You don't want to get mold, you don't want to get sick. It can lead to a lot of problems down the road if they don't hire you to do it properly because Bob or handyman is not going to know how to do it properly. Um, so that's just a little side note. But um, they don't want to, you know, they want to, they don't want a six hour wait time for you, they to get there, right? Like, you know, it seems like 60 minute response time kind of seems to be the average. Obviously, there's traffic delays and how far they are from your office, et cetera. But, you know, 60 minutes seems to be the common the common duration in our industry. And so what are the goals and desires of your ideal customer, right? They want to get the water leak fixed. They just don't even want to deal with it. They just want you to just get in there, get it dried out, get their house to light new condition again as quickly as possible. And there's a there's a, a funny, you know, quote that kind of goes through this. And, you know, when you're putting together your marketing message, your marketing materials, your plan, like the saying goes, if you can see Joe Jones through Joe Jones' eyes, then you can sell what Joe Jones buys. Um, I mean, that's, that's a mouthful. It's kind of hard to say. <laughs> but basically, you just want to look at everything from the customer's perspective, right? Like, what would you do in their situations? How an easier way to say it. Like, sometimes we have to reverse the table, right? Or get on the other side of the table. All right, what would I do? And I mean, a lot of times I think about it, I'm like, man, I'd probably pull out my cell phone, just do a quick Google search and then scroll, probably check out the reviews, you know, and then give the person a call and hopefully the answer pops off. Um, so just think about, you know, from the cu customer's perspective a lot of time. A lot of times what we think somebody's going to do or need or want, like that's our perspective, right? Like we're not in the situation they're in. And so, you know, we might handle things differently. So it's always, you know, I, I, you know I'd recommend kind of looking at it from both angles. But you know, preferably, you kind of want to come at it from an angle of, of your ideal customer. So the next step, you know, now that we got the, I, mean, I think I might have messed up that. I put the wrong <laughs> number on that last slide. But so we we kind of looked at the who, right? Our ideal customer. We got Joe Jones uh, kind of dialed in on on who we're going after. So now we want to you know take a look at you know our messaging. What kind of messaging are we going to put out there? you know, in, in front of these prospects, you know, and here's a, here's a few things you guys can write down or, or start to think about, like, why should someone choose you over the competition? I mean, we, there's, this is a ruthless industry, right? There's a ton of competition, even in the smaller cities. I mean, you got the Serve Pro, Service Masters, the Hero Cleans. I mean, you know, a lot of the bigger franchises, and then you also got the, the smaller family-owned restoration companies, right, that are, you know, locally owned. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could kind of play that both ways too. Like some people might prefer to work with a larger established franchise. Some people prefer the locally owned and operated, you know, they've been around 30 years companies, right? So yeah, I would use that, uh, I would test that and use that to your advantage in your, in your messaging uh, to your prospects. And I mean, what benefit, you know, what benefits can you offer them that somebody might not be able to offer? I mean, you know, kind of have the standard stuff, but, but think about a different angle that you might be able to pitch to them. That, and remember to think about this from there. Like, if you were in their situation, what would make you pick up the phone and make a call? Um, so that's a, you know, not that what you think they want to see, but you know, see it from their angle. Uh, you know, like what would make me, uh, you know, you know, maybe a warranty or satisfaction guarantee. You know, just yeah, think about it from all different angles. Um, 
and there's just a few examples too, right? That are, you know, 24 seven, same day service, free estimates, satisfaction guaranteed, certified technicians, trusted technicians. You know, if you've been doing this a while, you know, people feel more comfortable. You know, you don't, if you're a startup or somebody that's been doing it for 30 years, I mean, you know, it's okay if you're a startup, but if you've been doing it 30 years, people, some people resonate with that. So I've put that message in front of. And I kind of mentioned this before, the, the locally owned and operated. I mean, a lot of people, they only want to do business with locally owned companies, right? It's just, it's just how they are. Um, and so, you know, you can, you can test that in your copy and see, right? And then, you know, you just got to make the, make the case specific to your company. And here's just a few more examples. Kind of already said these, but you know, 60 minute response time, free estimates, technicians on call 24 seven, you know, IICRC certified technicians, you know, guaranteed. Um, and I, I've seen, you know, some of our clients have even gotten cr creative. You know, you see this more in the, the HVAC and plumbing and like landscaping, roofing. I mean, kind of a lot of the other home service niches, there's more of the, the coupon discount um play but i mean i don't know how y'all shop but that's something that always catches my eye when you're, you're out buying something it's like oh save 10 percent here or i mean you can test that right like save 10 percent or I've, we've seen some customers like we'll pay up to 500 dollars on your deductible i mean you know you don't have to guarantee you'll do that but you can say that in your messaging and then you know once you get to the job you'll have enough experience to know like all right it's about to be a thirty thousand dollar job i'm gonna offer Five hundred dollars towards this guy's a girl deductible to get it right, like that would make sense. Um, so that, you know you can get creative with that. That seems to work well. And if you don't do free estimates, I know a lot of a lot of companies do, but some kind of you know some of our clients they get so busy they just don't. I don't know. They're just running all over town. They don't have time. I mean, you can almost switch to get creative and tr switch it to like a free phone consultation. But if they want to estimate, then they might have to pay you know hundred fifty bucks for it or whatever. I don't. You know, I haven't seen it work too well where, where you charge for the estimates, though. Um, you know, you could offer a free phone consultation uh, instead. So, there's some things to think about. Um, but, you know, kind of, um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can get creative with it. So, hopefully, I got your, your wheels churning and, um, you know, you can kind of run with this. And obviously, it's going to be specific to your company and, and true and what, what you guys can offer. So, you know, take a, you got your pad and paper, you know, take a few seconds and kind of map, map out, you know, what, what, what's your message? What are some things to think about? And I, yeah, and I think, I mean, this is, this is kind of too fast paced, you know, sorry, I'm just trying not to keep you guys all day, but I definitely, you know, put some time and maybe with your team, right? Like, I don't know how big your companies are, but you know, just get together with your team or really dive into this and then and then you know what maybe messaging should you tweak and then come up with a plan put it on your calendar um when you're going to get it done and you know and out into the marketplace so that covers kind of the the two pieces of the triangle so let's move to the last and final piece which is media right so we we know who our ideal customer is we know the messaging of what we're going to put in front of that ideal customer while we're better than the competition. So the next piece is, you know, the how, right? How are we going to get this message in front of our ideal customers, right? And that kind of, you know, we, we might want to call it a hub, right? Like you got to make sure you have a hub and you want to make sure that hub converts. So this is the how aspect. So, you know, we like to look at the, the website is the hub, right? So everybody's, you know, some people are like, yeah, let me, let me check out online. And even if somebody gets like a referral, what, I mean, one of the first things they do, right, is they put them in Google real quick, they snoop around, they check out their Facebook, they check out their website, you know, maybe their YouTube channel, like people snoop around, right? But everything funnels back to your website. So you want to make sure you have a website that converts. And there's a lot of things you can do, but I mean, this is extremely important. I mean, especially moving forward. Um, and I mean, this is just an example, um, a website we built, but you want to make sure I'm not going to go too deep into this, but we'll, well, I do have another slide goes into a little further, but you know, you want to make it personalized, have team photos, 
you know, here you can't it's kind of too small to see here, but you know, 24/7 service, free estimates, license bonded, insured, family owned and operated. I mean, you want to have this where the customer is going to see that quickly. They don't want to have to click 10 pages on their site to get there because they're they're not going to click 10 pages on their site anyway, right? Maybe a couple, then they're gone. They're either making the call or they're onto your competitor site. So make sure your your website is built to convert. And actually, this is, I don't know if any of you guys um, saw this interview I did with, with Corey not too long ago. I'll, um, I'll give you the link to this here at the end too. You can check it. It's a cool interview. Like he, he didn't even have a local website. Last year he came to us and said, hey, I need help. I want to dominate my local market. And he's probably going to do about 1.2. I think he's going to finish the year around 1.2, maybe 1.3. Uh, so it's kind of a cool story. Super cool guy. Um, so you guys, I'll give you that guy's the link at the end so you can watch that if you want to. Um, but it's kind of a, just a cool story that having a, having a website built to convert matters. And obviously there's business to be had on the interwebs these days. <laughs> but so here's, so here's a couple you know, highlights I'll go over with you guys. So does it speak to your target avatar? Does it address their fears, frustrations, and why they should choose you over the competition? Like don't just have water damage restoration with a stock image on your site. Like, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, that's, they're going to be like, all right, on to the next one, right? So you are, it really takes some time to think about this. Man, I need, I almost need to like bold this because this I think this is becoming more and more important is, you know, the real authentic images. It, it almost, there's like a weird subconscious thing to have, you know, when you see it, it's like, oh man, those guys look like friendly, um, you know, friendly, those guys just look friendly, right? I wouldn't mind them coming to my house and helping to get like do it again. Like, I feel like the, the connection there versus seeing a stock image, I mean, it matters, right? That's why conversion rates tend to go up when you do that. And, and, you know, if you don't have, like, a huge team yet or whatever, I mean, it's fine, right? But if you have a team that you can get, like, some sort of team photo together on, you know, or you can take a picture of your truck with your, with your logo on it, just something to set you apart from the competition and show that you're a real company out there and you're in their area and, and you care. And, you know, if you want to take it to another level, you can have like a website welcome video. You can kind of have videos together. You can have like a mold removal video, talk about the mold removal process. You can have a fire damage video, just kind of explaining that process for a prospect. I mean, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you, YouTube's getting more and more traffic. And, you know, people are watching more and more videos because it's easier than sitting there and reading a bunch of text, right? We're in the instant gratification world. And I feel like that's only getting crazier, the people's attention span. Is about minus two seconds, so it's it, you know, but people will sit down and kind of watch a, a video. It's more like sitting down watching TV. So just keep that in mind too. Video seems to convert well. Your online reviews, this is huge. I mean, think about how you should like when I shop online. Reviews is huge. And I mean, think about your how do you personally shop? I imagine reviews come into play. And I think this, I think this is something people are sleeping on, and you know, the companies that are on top of this are going to crush it and you know, it's going to be harder and harder for the, the companies aren't focusing on reviews to catch up because somebody's Google My Business listing has, you know, 100 reviews and the, the other two guys only have four. I mean, who's going to get the call? And it's going to be harder for those other guys to catch up too, right? Like, so, I mean, and then, you know, you, those are going to be on your Google My Business page. Well, you want to display those on your website too, right? Because if somebody just happens to get to your website and bypasses the Google My Business, you want to show them, hey, we've got 100 five-star reviews give us a call. I, so I think reviews are huge and it's only going to get more, uh, more relevant and, you know, prominent moving forward. And, you know, make sure that it's easy then for to take action and call your company, have your phone number, a clickable phone number on your website. Uh, I still review a lot of websites. I mean, the, the phone number is not clickable. And so all the mobile traffic, they're sitting here trying to call the number, if it doesn't populate the dollar on their phone, they get annoyed with it. I know I do that. It drives me crazy. You want to just make it easy. And preferably when they're, you're scrolling on your phone, you can have it. A plug, there's plug-in stuff and you have where the phone number sticks. So it's always visible. I mean, that's ideal because that way they don't have to go searching for the phone number, right? You want to make it as easy on the customer to call you as possible. They don't, you don't, if they have to start searching, I mean, what happens? People get frustrated and they're gone. You know, they're on to something else. So, you know, the calls to actions, telling them to call now, click this number, stuff like that is, is big. Um, the phone number top right corner seems to convert best. 
you know, some people do still like to fill out just an email. I mean, for the emergency situations, not really, but, you know, more like the mold removal. You know, sometimes, you know, if somebody didn't have, like, an emergency leak, they might say, hey, I think i got a leak. Come check this out. And, you know, any credibility symbols you might have, like your Better Business Bureau, did you get any awards from Home Advisor or Angie's List or, you know, whatever the case may be. Are you a member of the RIA, for example, right? Put that, put that on there. Um, any certifications? You know, some of our clients, you know, are veterans. We, you know, we put the veteran badges on there. So just think like, you know, that's again kind of ties into what said, what's, why are you different than the competition? So any awards that you may have, um, you know, maybe locally in your city, you, you want a Chamber of Commerce award or something like that. Like put that on the website. Like that people are like, huh, cool, this must be a, a good company to work with. They're getting awards. You know, so that matters to some people. Some people might not necessarily care, but it won't hurt. I promise you that. And, you know, we're seeing this too. Like sometimes people would rather chat. I mean, you can, there's even chat bots now that it's a chat bot, bot, but it actually is communicated with the client via text, you know, because, you know, texting is becoming more and more popular. So some people to do that, right? Especially longer, longer, younger generations. I mean, they think talking on the phone is weird, right? So they just prefer to chat, even if their house is completely flooded. Um, they just might want to chat or text somebody, which is, Seems crazy, but man, I don't. I think that's definitely uh, happening. It's going to be happening more and more, you know, as the, as we go through generation changes and you know, demographics change and all that stuff. So, so those are a few, uh, you know, highlights you guys can keep on, you know, just so you think about these things. So, you know, that's kind of a lot to take in, right? There's a lot of different things you can do. So this is kind of like I like to break things down sometimes, but maybe there's. Some of you might even have pulled up your website while we're going through this. You know, what are three things that really stand out that will help you in 2020 that you can go ahead and get updated quickly, right? Like maybe you need a phone number in the top right-hand corner. Maybe you have a team photo it's just not uploaded yet. And then maybe you need to put, you know, a plug-in on your site for when somebody ends up on your site uh, from a mobile phone the phone number sticks to where they're scrolling, they can tap the call, right? So that'd be three, that'd be an example of three good things that you can implement fairly quickly on your site and will help, you know, convert a lot better. So take it that, you know, I kind of ran through that a little quick. But, you know, take a few, uh, few minutes, like, is there anything that, you know, you learned, what did you notice, what do you need to improve? And if anybody had any aha moments, you know, feel free to throw it in the chat box um, too, and, and we can kind of share with each other what what we liked and what we did not, or any uh, aha moments, or, or what you're going to be thinking about most moving forward. But all right, so another big aspect is know and track your KPIs. The KPIs are key performance indicators. So, you know, talking with a lot of companies that a lot of people are doing this, I mean, down to a real detail level and a lot of companies, I mean, they're not even, you know, if, they're, if their phone's ringing, they're, they're like, okay, something's, <laughs> somehow my phone's ringing, but they're not really tracking like, all right, what, how many leads am I getting a month? What am I spending? What's my average cost per lead? And where are my leads coming from, right? So those are some just, I mean, this KPIs can get real like nitty gritty, but like a lot of times keeping this stuff like, you wanna track it, but you wanna keep it simple enough to not confuse people. And at the end of the day, right, you just wanna make sure like, you know, what's my cost per lead? How much money am I spending? How much money am I making, right? So you just keep it simple. You don't wanna sit there for four days trying to calculate weird KPIs and all that. But th these are kind of the higher level KPIs that we like to look at, you know, we want you guys to look at to kind of see, you know, what's going on. So, and, and one way to do this, and this is what we do with our clients is, I mean, you, you want to track, you know, all the leads and where are the leads coming from? Um, so, I mean, this is just an example. So, you know, we track all the leads that come in. So this guy, you know, he got 73 leads in a month and, you know, we track it from, you know, Google My Business, his organically from his site, 
Did it come from Google Ads? And I mean, it's not shown on this part. This is kind of the, the higher level report, but there's reports where you can show, all right, I got this, this leads from Google My Business or this many leads from Google My Business. I got this many leads from these pages on my site. I got this many. And that way you can kind of break it down and kind of see, all right, man, it looks like we're getting a ton of leads uh, for Google My Business. Let's, let's put you know, a lot more effort on getting more, getting ranked in the free pack for more terms to where we could drive up that call volume. And that lead volume. So whoever you get, know, whether you're, you're working with us or somebody else, just make sure you're tracking all this and keep track of where everything's coming from. That way you know what's working and what's not. Otherwise, you're flying blind, right? You don't really know what's going on. So, you know, so far we've kind of talked about your goals and targets for 2020. We've kind of talked about your, you know, the market message, you know, how you're going to do it and who you're going to go after. You need to make sure your website is built to convert. And I mean, it gave you guys a simple KPI dashboard to keep in mind. I mean, that shouldn't be too hard to, to set up. So, you know, let's, let's go a little bit deeper and you know, what in 2020, we'll, we'll die, you know, we kind of talked about the website a little bit, but there's some also some other things you guys can be doing to other channels to drive up the number of leads and jobs you get on, on a monthly basis. So think about what, you know, what's your plan for 2020? These are kind of the, and there's more than you can do to this too, honestly. So don't, yeah, you know, you can be doing Instagram ad or yeah, Instagram ads, Facebook ad. It, you know, there's there's so many different avenues. Bing, Yahoo, but they, we've kind of broken this down and tested it. Like these, I would start with these. Like, you know, do you have an optimized Google My Business page? Are you ranking them three pack? For your local area, do you have a, a clean looking website built to convert? Do you have somebody working on your search engine optimization for you? Are you running paid ads? That's a whole other angle, right? That you can be getting leads from. Are you managing your reputation and getting more reviews on a consistent basis, right? Like we, we do see sometimes people get excited about this for a week and then they kind of just no more reviews ever, right? Like you want to get your team fully on board, your technicians fully on board. On getting as many five star, you know, preferably five star reviews as possible. So I mean, I would really think about these. You know, what you're and then, and if you already are doing all the all six of these aspects, you know, maybe yeah, we're doing you know Google Map rankings, but you know, we're not really quite in a free pack yet. We're trying, but we're not there. So think about you know, for 2020, what do you need to really do to improve the aspects, you know, of what you're currently doing. So here's a few things that, you know, we're, we're going to start seeing more and more in 2020. So some key trends. Now, a lot of you have kind of already seen some of these. Some of you haven't like Google local service ads. I don't, I was talking to somebody the other day. They haven't, it, it was rolled out in their city, but they, they weren't aware of what it is and what, you know, how to use it or anything. So, I mean, this is, I'm going to get into this, but Google's kind of still rolling this out. So we'll, we'll go to that in a second. And then, you know, we're seeing, I kind of mentioned this before too, like a lot of, you know, the phone call conversions, something to keep in the back of your mind is the, the chat conversions and the text conversions and stuff like that. We're going to, I don't think it's going to take over the phone, but it's something to think about. It's going to be another avenue to get leads and something we're going to be seeing more and more into the future. And then I think, you know, the companies are really going to dominate crush it in their areas, you know, we're going to be seeing this more and more is they're going to have the all in approach, right? They, they know they need to be anywhere and everywhere in their local market to where people are like, damn, I think I've heard that company before I should call them. You know, that's just from a brand authority standpoint. And then also you want to be everywhere in the emergency situation where people's toilets are overflowing that you're the company they call. So for those of you that haven't really heard of Google local services yet, it's the top three uh, spots of the bear, uh, on the Google search with the orange stars and the green badge. And it's, you know, the listings are, you know, the map pack, they're a three pack, whatever you want to call it. They list it, you know, vertically. Well, th these listings are kind of sideways at the top. Like I said, it's mainly, it's in all the bigger cities pretty much now, and they're, and they're still rolling it out in the medium sized cities. But you might have, some people are calling this, you know, Google guaranteed. It's the same thing. Um, to be to get on this program 
you know, you have to go through a qualification process. And, and when you do that and you're approved, you become Google guaranteed. And that just means I think the limit is uh, that Google guarantees the customer up to $2,000 that they're going to be satisfied with the job. So it's almost like a warranty guarantee that, you know, Google's offering or to entice the, the prospects to, to, you know, go through that platform to hire their contractor or whatever. But, so, it, you know, it, this actually rolled out a couple, couple years ago. Um, and it started in, you know, San Francisco, New York City. And it, like I said, it's, it's kind of rolled out into most medium-sized cities at this point. And I don't, I have, you know, we don't know where the cutoff's going to be, like, but it does seem like they're doing it on a population base and demand base, right, and traffic. But it seems, I don't know, like, you know, they're going to cut it off at 20,000 population cities. They're not going to do it. We, don't, we haven't figured that part out yet, but it does seem like major metropolitan areas definitely there, and then even the medium-sized cities in each state. It seems like it's, they've rolled out pretty quickly this year, and they're going to continue doing that next year into 2020. So how does that impact the search results? I mean, this is what it looks like on a zoomed out version. At the top, you know, you got the local service ads, then you got the regular paid ads below that, and then you got the three pack on the Google My Business map rankings below that, and then you have Google SEO organic below that. So I mean, there's a, you know, there's a lot going on now. That you look at it, and the crazy thing is, is we're, we're seeing Google My Business, like, you know, it's three quarters of the way down, but the most leads are coming through Google My Business listings. And then organic, surprisingly. Because people are still, people know these are paid ads up here, so they're less, I mean, people still, there's still traffic there, don't get me wrong, but the majority of traffic still comes from Google My Business and it's organic. But there's definitely leads, you know, in Google Ads and Google Open Service Ads, but it's not quite as high as the Google My Business and the organic stuff. So how does Google local services work? I um, mean, there's an application process. I mean, you know, for, in order for Google to offer this guarantee, they're going to do their, their check on you, right? They're not just going to offer offer this to any company that raises their hands to say, hey, I'd like to do this. Um, you go through the application process, then they're going to do a background check on you and your employees. They do a license check. Um, and it looks, I think they use, yeah, Pinkerton Consulting for the background checks. They might have added a more recently but I, and as far as the background checks go I believe it's just the owners and, and then the technicians that'll be going to the job so I don't believe like you know administrative assistant or anybody like that would have to get the, the background check so I think just the owners and people that be physically going to the, the customers houses and it, it's, it's basically just a paper lead model a lot of you guys are familiar with you know paper lead this is you know we, we, this is the same thing basically, and you just pay anywhere from 75 to 129 a lead, which, as you go in our industry, that is not bad at all. Um, but I think, you know, that it's all over the place. I think Google slowly rides in those prices like they always do. Um, I mean, because it's competitive, right? But that, that kind of seems to be the market that we've seen, but it does vary by city and specific, you know, like mold will obviously be different, water damage, just like it usually is. So. Keep those things in mind. But you know, here's some some feedback we've gotten from active users. I mean, it is a lower cost per lead than the PPC. I mean, PPC is it still works, yes, but it's it's competitive, right? I mean, these are higher quality leads than than Home Advisor, which is you know, pay per lead program with a shared lead, right? Like you and eight other people get it. So that's just makes your odds of landing the job, you know, eight times more more difficult. Um, but there are still some price shoppers and stuff that comes through. So, you know, you got to follow. If you don't close them on the – if you don't book an appointment right then or there, I mean, you got to follow up quickly. Um, we all know that at this point, but especially in our industry and niche. But, you know, it's a, it's a good ROI. I mean, it's, if you're only paying that per lead and you're not bad at closing, you should be able to make money from this. So, you know, if you're, if you're not currently doing this and you want to, you know, you want to do this, um, you're currently, you know – on our team, just get reach out to your account manager, and we'll uh, we'll help you get started on that. I mean, you guys would have to do the background checks and stuff like that. We can't we can't do that for you, but we can help we can help be the the liaison right between between you and Google, and just make sure you're you're getting everything covered. But you can go ahead and start working on the background checks. 
you know, get your tracking in place. And then once you get it set up, Google likes to see people actively, you know, the way it works is you can, you know, somebody calls in, if you book an appointment, you can, in the dashboard, you can drag it over and say appointment book. Google will tend to show you in that three pack more, the more active. If they, if they see you're actively using this and you're willing to, you know, to spend money and pay for leads, they're going to show you more love basically. So keep that in mind if, if you're not currently doing it. I'd recommend doing it. It's just another lead avenue for you guys to, to use just to, to ramp up your, you know, your revenue in 2020. So I, you know, just to circle back on this, I mean, I think the big, the biggest thing is just to have an all in approach and, and be hitting this from all angles. I think this is a must and it's, it's not because especially in our industry, it, it seems like there's never just, the same amount of leads month over month, right? Because you're, you know, plumbers might be hooking up like crazy one month and it just, then they don't send you anything, right? Same with insurance agencies or property management companies. Well, it's the same. It's, it's, it's like that online too, right? There's always fluctuations like the weather patterns, time of year affects our industry big time, right? So that's why you want all these channels set up to where if one dips, you're covered, right? And it's just, you know, it's more irons in the fire, for lack of a better word. So I, I definitely recommend you guys think about this in 2020. And, you know, if you're already doing it, think of ways you can improve it. If you're not doing it, then think, you know, go, go out here and, you know, go out there and implement it yourself or, you know, reach out to us or, or you know, what, some other company and just get somebody working on this for you ASAP. You know, and I just want to show you guys a few case studies. You know, I still every now and then, you know, talk to, <laughs> I think it's, you know, people are realizing the internet's not going away like a Earlier, but I still every now and then I have a conversation where I, uh, you know, I don't need a website. Like, you know, Bob, I've never years send me work. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that's fine, right? And I recommend getting jobs from Bob. But I mean, to really ramp up, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get into the seven figure business and beyond usually without doing some sort of marketing, right? Like, it's just, that's just the way it goes. So really ramp up. And then and even to get into the, you know, 10 million plus range. I mean, you, you got to be multiple, multiple angles um, from a marketing standpoint. So just a few, I mean, I, I showed you guys this earlier. I mean, here, you know, here's a, here's a client in the, in the three pack and the organic. So, I mean, it's just a matter. I mean, he's, you know, he's the only one holding down two spots here versus everybody else. I mean, who do you think the prospect's going to call, right? So, you know, here, he, here, he, this is from different sources, but you know, 63 leads in a month. And he's, and this is from an all in approach, right? This isn't from one source. Again, multiple sources set up, 73 leads in a month. There's another one, multiple sources set up, 80, 80 leads in a month. So, you know, again, I can't, I can't reiterate enough, enough on this. I mean, all, 2020, you need to be thinking about all angles. And, you know, you probably you might not be able to get them all rolled out in a week, right? But just think about having a plan in place when you're going to roll that out and how you're going to dominate your, your local market. And here, yeah, I mentioned this earlier. Here's another example of what happens. He took the all-in approach, hit all the different angles, and, and his business exploded. Um, so, again, what do all these companies have in common? They're all in on their online marketing. You know, again, whether it be us or somebody else, that, that doesn't matter. The point is, you know, you're on here live with me or you're watching this recording. I'm just please make sure you're you're getting into it and you're and you're trying to ramp it up. Um and that, yeah, actually I'll I'll give you somebody messaged me about the yeah, I'll get you guys the link. So if you want to watch that, um Yeah, there. Yeah, somebody messaged me about the link. So there, there's the link if you guys want to watch that. Um, so we'll keep going through. But yeah, so I mean, build your. And yeah, I remember I'm going to give you guys this uh, this checklist too. This can kind of help you. I mean, I you know I know all all those six items I gave you guys is kind of a lot, but I kind of have some of those broken down a little bit more on this checklist. Um, so hang tight. I'm going to give you that uh, here at the end too, and you can kind of review that after the webinar. You kind of see again, you know, what you're doing, what you're not. 
But, you know, based on what I've talked about thus far, and you can eat, or you can circle back to this once I give you the checklist. But, you know, I'd pick at least three to start. You know, like I said, you might not be able to, to, to pick all six at, at one or, at, you know, at a time. But, you know, pick three that you want to do. You know, you want to get your Google My Business ranked in the three-pack. You might want to get your – online reviews integrated to your website to where people can actually see them on your website and, and navigate to them easily. It's another thing. You don't want to have them hidden on your website. And then, you know, maybe you want to start running some paid ads. You haven't really explored the paid ads avenue, so maybe that's something you want to do. So that could be your top three. So just take a second and, you know, make some notes to yourself. And anything you guys want to share in the chat box, feel free. You know, any aha moments you've had, let me know you haven't fallen asleep on the other issue. <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll continue on. I know we've covered a lot today. I mean, we've set goals. We've gone over the three fundamentals. We talked about website optimization. We kind of talked about the big picture of, of online marketing and the all-in approach. Uh, we've gone over, you know, some of the, the latest trends that we're going to see more and more of in 2020. And we've kind of, hopefully you guys along the way have kind of mapped out a custom action plan specific to your business as we've gone. I do recommend, you know, put some time on your calendar to kind of circle back and really do some thinking on this. And, you know, just don't throw us to the side. I think I think it's extremely important. Um, now, you know, I do, I do get this question a lot too, because if, you know, they're like, Jamie, I know I need to be doing this, but I don't have time to personally do it. I'm, running my business, um, training new technicians, I'm going out to jobs, I'm, I'm getting equipment, you know, it's, you're busy, right? So if you need help and you want to work with us to help you get this and, you know, ramped up, at the, you know, towards the end of this year, 2020, then, you know, put a let's talk in the comments and I'll, um, I'll reach out to you and you and I can hop on a call and kind of take a look at what you're doing and what we might need to do to ramp up. So you can put, you know, let's talk in the comments or, you know, give us a call at the office and we'll, uh, we'll get a, a time booked on my calendar where we can um, dive in. I can help you, you know, maybe get some of this stuff implemented a little bit quicker for you. Um, it's because, you know, it could take a while. I mean, some of you guys might be able to run with this and do it on your own. More power to you, right? But I know a lot of people I talk to, they're like, man, we just don't, we want somebody to handle this for us so we can just focus on our own business. So. If that's you, you know, put a let's, let's talk in the um, chat box or give us a call at the office. Or you can actually go to the, this. <laughs> this link is obnoxiously long. I need to come up and get a new, uh, put a new link out there. Oh, there's too much to type in. <laughs> I'll put it in the chat box for you, too. So if you want to schedule a call here, uh, go to this link. And there'll be a, a link to my calendar there. So book a call and we can, uh, we can talk. So for those of you that stuck around, I'm going to also put in the chat box a link to the checklist that you can use. Let me grab that for you. So this is a Google Drive link. So when you click it, you'll you'll have, in the top right corner, there'll be a little, um, I think, arrow pointing down. You click that and you'll download the PDF file to your computer, right? Then you can, you can take a look at it, print it out if you'd like, or just look at it on your phone, whatever you want to do. It's your, your call. But. I'll put that into the uh, the chat bot for you again. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the webinar. Again, if you want our help getting some of this done or coming up with a plan for 2020, you know, 855-649-8650 is our office number. Or, you know, shoot me a quick message in the chat. Or you can go to this link and uh, sign up on my calendar. Um, let me check the comments. Can you give us the link again? Yeah. Susan here. Yeah, just book a, book a, um, book a time on that last link. Man, there's a lot of links going on there. But, yeah, just book a, book a time on my calendar in that link and we'll talk and see how we can help. But hope you guys enjoyed today's session. I can hang around for a few minutes if you'd like. And um, if you guys have any questions or anything, put them in the chat box. See if I can't help you out. 
enjoyed it today. Let's see, again, a few messages come in. Katie, awesome webinar. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem, Katie. Get, glad you enjoyed it. Hopefully, hopefully you guys got something from, from it today. Let's see, Dave, great webinar. Thanks. I'm too busy to do this on my own, so I'm definitely going to get your help. <laughs> yeah, you're. that's the biggest thing I hear probably, Dave, is it's just too busy. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, hey, will somebody try that link, that, um, that Google Drive link and see if they can get the checklist? Okay, awesome. Thanks, Brittany. Um, yeah, Clint, I think it's working. You, so when you go there, you gotta, the tricky part is you gotta click the, you gotta download it. Like, you can still look at it and scroll on the, on the link I sent you, but if you want like a PDF copy, in the top right corner, you have to click download. And then whether you're in Firefox or Chrome, there'll be like a downloads folder. I mean, I know that's kind of annoying, but that's how you, how you get to it. So your downloads folder, if it doesn't populate automatically for you, your downloads folder should have the, the checklist. So um, I think it's working. Let's see, I got a few messages coming in. Yeah, no problem, guys. You're welcome. Any other questions or anything about any of this? Or we, um, I'll hang on for a few more minutes. Otherwise, everybody have a good, enjoy the rest of your Thursday afternoon. Enjoy your your Christmas, your holidays. Damn, it's only less than two weeks away. It's, mm -mm, it's crazy. We're going to blink and 2020 will be here, unfortunately. <laughs> kind of stresses me out when time moves this fast. Hey, nothing we can do about it, right? So, yeah, no problem, Andres. You're welcome. Glad you guys could join. That was fun. All right. I think I'm going to end it here. Like I said, everybody have a good afternoon. Like I said, if you want to, you know, click, click that link if you want to um, hop on a call sometime to see if we can't maybe help you out. And until next time, I'm going to keep trying to do this in, uh, in 2020. So we'll see you guys again soon. And, uh, Looking forward to it. All right. See you later.